Hey, good morning, friends. Welcome to River Heights Vineyard. I'm Justin. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm really glad to see you. And if you're joining us from home, uh, greetings. Good to see you. Uh, let's stand together if we're able. And we're going to start uh, by singing to the Lord together. Uh, and I'd like, it to, I'd like to just pray. Uh, if you join me in your hearts, that would be awesome. God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name. And we thank you for your love for us. And we take this moment uh, as we've gotten ourselves situated in here in the room to say, come Lord Jesus. We welcome you, Spirit. And thank you, Father, for your love. We welcome you to move among us, God. We ask for the grace to receive from you today the good things that you have for us. We also ask for the grace to give ourselves to you. You're worthy of all glory and honor and praise, God. Amen. Thanks for praying with me.
Kingdom come. Kingdom come, Spirit take over my heart, over this place. Here we are, Lord, before majesty and light, Lord, we adore. Sing to me, sing away. Brokenness that would separate, creating me integrity. A heart that holds on and a soul that's free. abound here and let freedom ring out in this place. Let freedom ring out here. Let grace abound here. Let freedom ring out in this place. Kingdom come, spirit take over my heart, over this place. Here we are, low before your majesty's light, Lord, we adore, so sing to me, sing away. The brokenness that would separate, creating me integrity. A heart that holds on and a soul that's free, so let freedom ring out here. Let grace abound here, let freedom ring out in this place. Abound here, let freedom ring out in this place. Let freedom ring out here, let grace abound here, and let freedom ring out in this place. Let freedom ring out here, and let grace abound here. Let freedom ring out in this place. God, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives, what you've done for us. Every week we have the opportunity to have communion together as a church family. You'll notice there are two tables here in the front. There's one in the back to the left of the doors. Those uh, tables have the elements on them. Uh, those elements signify Jesus' sacrifice for you and for me on the cross. Just be aware that there's it's a little cup. There's a film you pull off, and then there's a wafer. And then underneath that wafer is another film. And then the juice is under that. On the night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and he gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and he gave thanks. He gave it to them, and he said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. 
Lord Jesus, come in glory. And it's through Christ and with Christ and in Christ and in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And we welcome you to come and take those elements anytime in the next two songs. child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen not forsaken I am who you say I am you are for me not against me I am who you say I am I am who you say I am I am who you say I am Only you say 
save me. Only your grace has brought me. Only you raised me. Out of my grave of sin and fear. God of new life. I belong to you. God of new life. I will trust in you. Burn me like fire. Cover me like the ocean. Make my heart pure. Wash all my sin away. You're with me in fire. Lifting me up from the ocean. God of new life. Faithful and flood and flame. Who is as faithful? Who in all blessing and trial will stay? Whose hand will hold me? In every minute, hour, and day. God of new life, I belong to you. God of new life, I will trust in you. God of new life, I will trust in you. God of new life, God of new life, we belong, we belong to you. God of new life, we will trust, we will trust in you. Lord, we thank you. We're thankful for your faithfulness to us and for your presence here among us. We say, let your kingdom come and let your will be done this morning. Amen. So good to worship together with you, friends. You can be seated. It's time for announcements, and Jeff has those. Morning, Jeff. Good morning, Justin. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, that was great. I love you guys. You guys are rock stars. And good morning online. It is good to see you as well. How about some elbow bumps for old time's sake? Elbow bumps, good times, good measures. All right. It is great to see you here. My name is Jeff. I'm one of the pastors on staff. And if you're a guest here, welcome to our home. Welcome to part of our family. Uh, It is great to have you with us this morning. I'd love to get to meet you after the service. So come and meet me in the Welcome Center right through the double doors there. uh, And we can chat afterwards. You get a free gift as well. So love to have you come and and, uh, share a couple stories. That would be awesome. Here at River Heights, we have a purpose statement. And that purpose is to help a growing number of people love God, love people, and change the world. And that is the filter that we do everything through here. 
every, every ministry, what we think about, how we do things, that is the filter that we use. And it is fantastic, especially when we're getting into the community and trying to change the world for Christ. So uh, we love doing that stuff. And we, there are many different ways to give to River Heights, and we love to give to that purpose statement. One of the ways you can do that is through PushPay, which is our online platform, or you can give checks, cash, and put it in an envelope and put those in the connection boxes on your way out. I'd like to stop for a second and just pray over that. See what God will do with that. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, just come. God, we just thank you for the gifts that come in. God, we just want to bless your kingdom. That's what we want to do. We want to bless your kingdom. We know that you're going to take these monies, take these gifts, and you're going to do amazing things with them. So, Lord, we just thank you. And, Lord, I just pray that you would bless the hands that give today, Lord. Just love on them. Bless them no matter what they give. It doesn't matter. Lord, we just thank you that we can give with joyful hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, in your bulletin or in your program is what we call a connection card. If you could pull that out for me, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you're a member, a regular attender, jot your name down at least. Please jot your name down. If you're a, a guest, fill it out with as much information as you feel comfortable doing. Uh, one reason why is because as a staff, every week, we take these and we pray over them. We divide them right in. Because we all go through things. We all go through junk and stuff. This is an amazing workshop, and I say amazing because uh, this person came and, and uh, helped us through it as a staff. We went through it, part of it, and within the hour, it was an amazing thing because um, they, we cover signs and symptoms of trauma, what that looks like, because, man, over the past year and a half, we've all gone through something with COVID and everything and all the stuff that's been going on, um, but we see the signs and symptoms of trauma how that impacts our bodies, our brains, our thoughts, typical patterns of response and the way uh, that can become problematic for us. Um, and then ways that we can care for each other. Because as a family, as a church family, church body, we're, we're supposed to care for one another. The Bible even says that, care for one another, care for each other. And so this is a great way that we can do that and we can help. Now the workshop is led by Jenny Bell. Uh, through Threads of Hope Counseling. Um, actually, it's Paul and Lisa's daughter who is leading that and coming to help uh, do that workshop. And Paul is actually preaching today. So his daughter is coming to do that, and she is phenomenal. It is fantastic. She talks to us. She helps us through things. Um, she's not too heady. She'll actually say things that we can understand and give us things that are tangible for us to do. So on your connection card, you can register uh, it's free, the whole the thing is free, and also kind of the, an overall view of the Vineyard Movement. So love to have you join us for that on September 13th at 1 o'clock. You can sign up on your connection card so we know that you're coming. Now, we all get to stand up and greet somebody around. Great to see all of you here, and welcome online. Um, my name is Paul Mandel. I'm a member of the volunteer preaching team. Uh, most of you know my wife, Lisa, who splits her time here between Baby Church, the soundboard, playing bass, and for the past two years, church council. Uh, when I'm not here, I'm usually at the Catholic community of St. Thomas Beckett in Egan, where I'm involved in numerous ways there. And as this week, um, I have been retired for 45 days. Uh, thank you. Thanks. I'm still well, and we're both still alive and talking. At, at least after nine in the morning. Um, today, we continue our series on women of faith, and I chose to speak about Mary and Martha, the two sisters of Lazarus. Now, for many, these two sisters represent the contemplative and the active in behavior, or if you will, the extrovert and the introvert. And if those of you who know me know, I favor the extrovert, so truth be told. And but taken together, it's a both and as the complete package. They are found in two different books of the Bible, uh, first in Luke and then in John. And I purposely chose to wear this shirt. This is from the Duluth Vineyard, which puts forth the two-part prime directive of Jesus' message for our lives. Love God, love people. Of course, our, our purpose here at River Heights Vineyard has love God, love people, and change the world. And many believe that if you do the first two right, the third will happen. Um, so allow me to hear to pause for a prayer that I found while preparing for today's message. 
Jesus, help us to learn to cherish and make time to simply sit with you in your presence and in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Show us all how to live a life of integrity in which I am the person of my word. Teach us how to invest our time in a way that honors the plan you have for my life. Only you can bring the holy balance and the peace as I surrender my own personal agenda. Now, as Justin noted over a month ago when he started the series, Women of Faith, speaking of Mary, the mother of Jesus, our two key points may be seen as, what do these iconic women teach me about God? And what do these women show about what God sees in me? The next week, Jeff spoke about stepping out of our comfort zone while speaking of Esther. So we first hear of Mary and Martha in Luke 10, 38 through 42. As they continued their travel, Jesus entered a village. A woman by the name of Martha welcomed him and made him feel quite at home. She had a sister, Mary, who sat before the master hanging on every word he said. But Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Later, she stepped in, interrupting them. Master, don't you care that my sister has abandoned me in the kitchen? Tell her to lend me a hand. The master said, Martha, you are fussing far too much and getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen it, the main course, and it won't be taken from her. So we hear that Jesus was traveling through the Judea to the town of Beth Bethany, where they live. Martha, on learning he's coming to town, hurries out to greet him amidst his disciples and followers and immediately invites him to their house for dinner. Hey, Jesus, as long as you're here, how about dinner at our place? Or maybe something a little bit more respectful. He obliges since he knows that Martha, since he knows and loves both Martha and her sister Mary, as well as their brother Lazarus. He's maybe tired, so he's eager to grab a bite with friends where he knows he can chill for a while. Now, Mary is, of course, thrilled when Martha runs into the house with Jesus and the others in tow. As all settle in, Mary joins the gang, sitting at Jesus' feet, eager to hear what he's been up to. Martha, on the other hand, is running about, maybe tidying up, then working in the kitchen to prepare some food and drink maybe some bread, some cheese, and at least some water, which of course meant that there could be wine at any moment. Now, in Jesus' time, it was not acceptable for women to be included in teachings by any respected religious leader. In fact, the space in the temple for women was further toward the outer walls. So for Jesus to treat Mary and Martha as equals to his disciples even, was in itself countercultural. Now, I would imagine Martha's thoughts going something like this. Okay, I was the one who invited him, and you, Mary, drop everything and join in with the guys sitting there just listening. Well, I've got to get things going here. I don't want Jesus to think my invite was disingenuous. Bread, cheese, something to drink, cups. Oh, great, now Lazarus is here. Where's Mary? Still out there with the gang. I know I shouldn't be feeling this way, but I'm missing everything. Oh, well, coming. Wow, Jesus, it's like they haven't eaten all day. Maybe I'm going to need to do some more. Oh, by the way, Jesus, do you think Mary could help me? I mean, I need to get some more food and maybe run next door for something. And what's that? I'm sorry. What did you say? Mary is fine where she is. I need to chill. Well, of course, I'm worried. Look how quickly everyone's eating everything. I need to, well, yes, I'd rather join you too and listen, but... It's just that, okay, sorry, but thanks for understanding. I just wanted to make you feel welcome. As she's been knee deep in the kitchen trying to put something together, she probably heard some laughter and much talk and frustrated that it had all been left to her, approached Jesus calmly, or maybe in a whiny voice, suggesting that he encourage her sister to help rather than just sitting there. Jesus looked up at her and in a very loving voice merely suggested that to Martha that she needed to chill. Martha, Martha, you worry too much and are letting the anxieties of this time trouble you too much. 
Don't sweat the small stuff. Your sister Mary is just fine where she is and has chosen the better path, for she realizes that my time is limited. Besides, it's not every night you get Jesus to come to your house. Now, Jesus could have chided her or jokingly reminded her what he could do with some fish and a few loaves of bread, but he chose instead to use it as a teachable moment, speaking to her heart in order to quiet her inner spirit. Martha, eager to share time with a friend, had impulsively invited Jesus to their house. Jesus purposely chose not to minimize her eagerness to serve, but had merely suggested that if she were open to it, she might find she was missing out on something special. Have you ever found yourself sweating the small stuff and missing out on something important? Have, have each of us truly invited Jesus into our home, our heart, and then waited patiently listening rather than running around busy as ever? I recall here that Justin, in his introduction to this series, spoke of how God sometimes turns our world upside down, which can result in us needing to let go of our plans while he offers us instead his plan for us. Allow me to share a pop-up test I discovered in preparing this message, and I'd encourage each of you to check on whether you worry too much. And I'll be right up front with you, I failed big time. So see how you might do answering yes or no to each for yourself. I'm a competitive person. I'm not very flexible. I like to be in control. I am a perfectionist at times. Some of my traits are at odds with each other. I give the appearance of confidence, but I'm often insecure. I set different goals. I don't relax easily and just ask any of my kids. The worst thing a doctor can say is go home and rest. I often act impulsively. I am preoccupied with the future. I'm dependable. And this one I do take pride in. I pass on that one at least. I hate being late. I like lists. I worry too much. Just ask my wife. I'm an extreme person. I expect total honesty and loyalty. I don't like spontaneity. On the surface, I come across emotionally in control, but when things go bad, my insecurity and tendency to worry about the future and how to control it kicks in. Maybe after taking this test, more of you, like me, can relate more to Martha. At the very least, you might see how she and Mary complement each other. Martha's generous service is not minimized by Jesus, but her anxiety shows that her service needs to be grounded more in Mary's comfort in being present to the moment. Mary, in contrast, reflects the realization that Christ is the word of God. As I, as I said, as an extrovert, I relate more to Martha and in part will defend her. But happy, I'm very happy that Jesus didn't say she was wrong or for what she did, only pointed out that Mary had chosen the better path. Together, though, they embody the truth that generosity and love of God are intertwined realities, or the extrovert and possibly the introvert, the A-type and whatever is the opposite. Taken together as a household, they truly complement each other. And as I noted before, and I'll repeat it again later, it's a both and. Now we often hear it's more blessed to give than receive, but to merely receive can at times be far more difficult. And in this instance, Mary chose that path. Often again, it's not an either or, but a both and. Everyone who has become a hearer of the word should truly become a doer of the word. Every act of service should be, prompt, should be both prompted and supported by prayer. And every prayer must then prompt the disciple into service. Martha offers the service Jesus calls us to in Luke 14, for he cannot repay her for her hospitality. Mary, meanwhile, offers an example of a lively personal relationship with God. So be generous and love God. Those who would welcome Jesus into their home should also, to be true to Jesus' call for each of us, welcome his people, the sick, the needy, the orphan, the stranger. Are we willing then to say, to the least among us, mi casa e su casa. 
Moving then to John 11, 17 to 14, Jesus is again out and about in a neighboring district when he gets word that his friend Lazarus is dying. But he stays on task and on plan for another two days before heading to Bethany. Margaret, uh, Martha greets him on the way in tears, telling him that her brother had died and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will grant you whatever you ask of him. To which Jesus responded, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know he'll rise at the resurrection on the last day, a sign as Jesus would later note in another setting, blessed are those who have seen, who have not seen and believe. Jesus then said to Martha, I am the resurrection. Anyone who believes in me, even though that person dies, uh, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Martha, boldly acknowledging Jesus as son of God, replied, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, the one who has come into this world. And at that, she ran home to grab her sister Mary, who was home grieving. On Mary's arrival, she threw herself at Jesus' feet in tears, saying as her sister had, had you been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus wept as he saw Mary's sorrow and asked where they had put Lazarus and went to the tomb and called Lazarus back to life. And here we pick up with John 11:33. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up in him and he was deeply troubled. Where have you put him? They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, see how much he loved him? But some others said, the man healed the blind man, but he couldn't keep Lazarus from dying. Jesus was still angry when he got to the tomb, a cave with a stone rolled across it. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. And then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it aloud for the sake of these people standing here so that they will, they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped with a head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Now Martha's anxiety can at times reflect the parable of the seed falling among the thorns, choked out due to competition. In one sense, Martha, the impulsive one, might be compared to Jesus' disciple Peter, while Mary, calm and more contemplative, is more like John. One can look at the relationship between faith and works, acknowledging that we are called to have faith while understanding that we as Christians are called to do the stuff Jesus exemplified for us all, without which, at least sometimes, many might question our faith or how true we are to it. What if we really meant what we say? If we, as part of the church, stopped seeing it as an either or and instead see it as a both and. And our words then might be better matched by our actions, and we might be able to better portray what it means to be Christian. Sometimes this is captured in the saying, pray as if everything depends on God, and work as if everything depends on you. But again, it's a both and. Father Richard Rohr, a Franciscan, created the Center for, contemplation, for Action and Contemplation in New Mexico where year-round they offer retreats and now a living school. Through prayer and study, followed by witnessing in a variety of ways, be it outside nuclear weapons plant, helping the homeless or migrant workers suffering from deplorable work conditions or challenging some unfair um, work situations, all to help learn that necessary balance of faith and work. Some listening today might be among the 600,000 who subscribed to his daily meditations from the center, either from Rohr or one of his newer leaders like Paula Darcy, Brian McLaren, or Anne Lamott. Pope Francis, with an entire life lived in 
rooted in living out the gospel call to both prayer and service, opened showers and shelters for the homeless in the Vatican Square, choosing also on Thir Holy Thursday to wash the feet not of their honored religious leaders, but of the lepers and those in prison. And again, back to our own purpose here at River Heights Vineyard, to love God, love people, and change the world. This speaks to not only just the vertical part of the cross, that personal relationship between us and God, but also the horizontal part of the, between relating to our fellow human beings, often the more difficult part. How often do we take the long view of what we do and how we do it? So in returning to the lessons from Mary and Martha, while we gladly profess a personal relationship with God, creator, savior, redeemer, do we not also have the desire to go deeper in our response to the gospel, to the second part of the great commandment, that is, to our love our neighbor, honestly, fully, in real ways? Will we take seriously Jesus' call to love the other? Back in June, John Marsden spoke about the call for each of us as members of the larger church, as part of the human family, to disciple out racism, suggesting that we focus on three things, awareness, relationship, and commitment. It's been almost two months, and can anyone think about positive steps they have taken in any of these three areas, or at least the first area, awareness? Have we gone out of our way to read something new or to speak with someone with different views than ours, hopefully opening our minds and hearts to today's societal needs? Have we taken time to consider the need to get involved, to become co-creators with God in order to make our world a better place? As I noted earlier, if we take Mary and Martha together as the complete package with the balance needed for a fully lived life, I would hold them up as an example of what John was calling us to, through both our faith and then putting that faith into action. Now saying yes to God sometimes does turn our lives upside down, but as was noted by Justin, if in the process we lose grasp of our plan, that might just possibly be making room for God's plan. Do you trust that God has a plan for you, possibly one far greater than you might have imagined? I know that personally this was the case for me in the part of my life that I just retired from, which then makes me wonder what he has next in store for me. And Courtney, just two weeks ago, put the angel's question for Hagar to all of us. Where are you coming from? And where are you going? It reminds me of this demonstration I once saw And you take a large, clean jar and fill it first with rocks. There's seven rocks in here. And then you pour the sand. This sand fit in here and came out of here. And after you pour the sand in, then you pour water in, and the water gets absorbed by the sand and fills all the spaces. If, however, you put the same amount of sand in first and then try to fill it with rocks, you can see that the rocks don't even all fit, and then there's no room for all the water. The moral here is that if you focus only on the small things, you'll miss out on the big things in life. And I've also seen it done with golf balls, sugar, and coffee. And the moral there added is that there's always room for coffee. Uh, this time I would call up the worship group uh, to start getting ready. Taking it all in uh, with time to reflect, God is calling us to a healthy life based on both the calm, patient listening to the Spirit and to the active engagement with the world to help our brothers and sisters, that is, our neighbors. Where are we coming from and where are we going? These women we have been studying all present us with a new understanding both about God and how God sees us. And leaving you with three tips, I'd ask you to read Luke 10, 38 through 42. And then pray that the Spirit will show you your own weak area, whether it's too much of Martha 
like as it is with me, needing to slow down and be more present to the moment, or too much of Mary and the need to apply yourself more to being involved as a co-creator with God. And the do would be to look for an opportunity to work on your weak spot so that you can then lead a more full life with both faith and good works. And at this point, I just pray for all of us to find that weak spot, that God, you would come and be with us today. Show us what your weak, show us what our weakness is and help us to find and make that time to work on that weak area. I'd ask you to just show us the rewards from doing this work and from being, by being more of a full, fully lived Christ-like life. Thank you. Let's stand together as you're able. Thank you, Paul. This is our opportunity to respond to God in song and by receiving prayer. Um, we have, uh, do we have prayer team people in the room right now? personally pray for every single one of you this week. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. Yeah, and Jeff's going to come up and pray for some people too. So we've got the opportunity to say yes to God in a few different ways. One of those ways is just I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually just say a prayer, and I'm going to invite you to put your hands out in front of you right now. And it's just like to make a, make a space to, to let God meet us. God, we thank you for your word to us today. Thank you that you've invited us into a a life that's full. You've invited us into the, the both and. Just as Paul prayed over us, God, would you, by your spirit, even right now, bring your encouragement, bring your power, bring your change, God. Thank you that you don't leave us in the place of simply trying harder when we haven't been able to, to do that before. So we ask, Holy Spirit, did you come right now? Would you rest upon, would you fill your people? We say yes to receiving everything that you have for us, God. Meet us in our, in our uh, just desire to and for those of us that are a little too concerned about the details, we forget about the relationship part with you, God. Would you remind us, remind us again today, how much you just want to be with us. And God, where we've had trouble, like putting our faith uh, to work, to stepping out. God, would you come in your grace and your mercy so that we could take part in the things that you want to do through us, God. We say yes to you, God. So here at uh, River Heights, we just believe that God does move as we pray together. So um, if you are in need of anything, whether that's, you know, continued physical healing, health, if you have a need in your life like a uh, you know, needing a new job or God to come into a relational area of your life. These folks are great at praying and prayer makes a difference. So we invite you to come forward and receive prayer from them. The rest of us, we're going to be singing together. God, would you just hear our yes in our hearts? We lift up your name. This song is a 
uh, kind of refers to where uh, King David is like telling his his own soul to praise. So he's you know he's saying, "Oh my soul, praise." It's like talking to ourselves a little bit. And I think that uh, there's this cool thing of all of us are here in this room because we chose to be. So there's already a there's already a yes, an openness to the Lord. We have the opportunity to say, "Soul, praise the Lord." And I feel like God's going to meet us in that as well. Change comes as we say, I'm going to lift up the name of Jesus. I'm going to open myself. So God, we just welcome every single thing that you want to do here among us. You can sing with me, oh my soul. Oh my soul, praise. Oh my soul.
upon you and something's happening there, just let the Lord do what the Lord's doing with you. And if you have to head out, we'll bless you in Jesus' name. So good to be together. Looking forward to doing this again next week. May your day ahead and your week ahead be wonderful because of God's love and presence and activity in your life. And uh, these uh, prayer folks will still be around. Be happy to pray for you. Make sure you grab Paul on the way out and say hi. We thank you, Lord. Oh, 
bless you, friends. Oh.